Hi, today I'm going to show you how to build DIY recording equipment's FE2 Passive Direct Box Kit. To build the FE2, all you need is a soldering iron, some solder, Phillips head screwdriver, wire cutters, needle nose pliers are handy, and of course, an FE2 DIY kit. Open bag one, which contains the four resistors and one capacitor that we'll populate first. Identify the resistors by the five bands on their body. R1 is 10K, R2 is 1K, R3 is 150, R4 is 100 ohms, and the capacitor is 0.1 microfarads. Now bend the leads of the resistors against their body to make it easier to insert them into the circuit board. Now place the parts in their respective places in the circuit board. None of these parts are polarized, so it doesn't matter which direction they go in. Bend their leads against the bottom of the board as you insert them to hold them in place for soldering. Now solder these parts to the board. First, tin the tip of your iron by adding a little bit of solder. Then heat the pad right where it meets the joint for a couple seconds. Apply a small amount of solder and hold the iron in place for another couple seconds. Repeat this for each joint. Two seconds heating the pad, adding a little bit of solder, and then a couple more seconds on the pad. Once the joints have cooled, use your wire cutters to clip the excess leads. Clip as close as you can to the joint without clipping the joint itself. Now place the two switches in the positions marked SW1 and SW2. Bend their leads against the bottom of the PCB to hold them in place. Then solder all of the leads and clip them just as you did with the resistors. Next come the input jacks. First remove their nuts and washers. Place them in the two positions marked J1 and J2. Then flip the board over, and using the head of your screwdriver, bend a few of the leads against the circuit board. Now solder these in place and let the joints cool. There's no need to clip the excess leads here. There are three transformer options for the FE2. The FEX1, the FEX2, and Cinemag's CMDBX. Each transformer has its own footprint on the board. FEX1 is highlighted here. Note the pattern of the pins on the transformer and match them to the pads on the circuit board. FEX2 belongs in the largest square footprint. Note that one row of pins has a pin missing. Match this with the pads on the circuit board. Be careful, however, not to place the FEX2 in the pads for the CMDBX because it will fit. The CMDBX goes in the round footprint. Pin one is marked by a red dot on the transformer and a white dot on the circuit board. Double check that these are aligned and then place the transformer. Once you're sure you've got your transformer in the right position and orientation, solder it to the circuit board, and if necessary, trim the excess leads. Now locate your XLR jack and wire cutters, and cut off the ground tab as shown. We're removing this so that we can set the grounding ourselves with the ground lift switch. Now locate the long screw, a lock washer, and the back panel. Screw the panel to the XLR jack and make sure to put the long screw through the top screw hole. This is the screw we'll use to ground the circuit to the case. The lock washer scrapes off a bit of the finish to make sure we have a solid electrical connection.
Now for a little point-to-point -point wiring. Take the insulation off of one end of the black wire, place it through the ground pad on the circuit board, bend it against the circuit board, then solder and trim. Remove the insulation from the other end of the wire and grab your back panel assembly. We're going to wrap it around this screw to get a good hook shape and then tin the wire to prevent it from fraying. This just means that we heat it up like we would any other component and then add a bit of solder. Next, we'll solder the XLR jack. It can be a little tricky to hold the jack in place while you're soldering. So first, we'll fill the middle pad with a little bit of solder. Then place the XLR jack and push it through the PCB while you reheat that pad. Voila, the jack is perfectly in place. Now solder the other two pads. There's no need to trim these leads either. Now we'll fasten the ground wire to the XLR jack. First place a lock washer and thread the nut onto the screw. Now flip the assembly around, place the wire in between the XLR jack and the lock washer and tighten the nut a bit to hold it in place. Then use some pliers to tighten the nut. Now you can slide the PCB assembly into the bottom channel of the case and screw the panels in. Since these screws are cutting their own threads, you may feel a good bit of resistance when you first screw them in. Now add the washers and nuts for the input and through jacks. and apply the sticker on the side of the case for the transformer that's in your kit. And finally, apply the foam non-slip pad to the bottom of the case. Have a friend help you if you want. Congrats on finishing your FE2 passive DI box. Connect your source to the input and connect the through jack to an amplifier or speaker. Then use the switch to select whether you've connected an amp or an instrument to the input. Connect the output to a mic preamp of your choice. And if you're having ground hum, use the lift switch. The default position is ground.